My lofty position wasn't always accompanied by the fear of office. And there was a time when I could walk the streets or raise a glass in the tavern without concern for molestation. Faithful as the tide, one precocious village waif made it her hobby to shadow my every errand. It was charming then. Troublesome later. In financial desperation, I struck a bargain with the ancient things that surfaced in search of sacrifice when the moon was bright. Their price was the delivery of an obscure idol, and one other item of more troubling portent. The pact struck. My newfound accomplices slipped silently beneath the brackish water. A fearful stirring at the edge of the torchlight betrayed a familiar witness and gifted me with malign inspiration. Under the blood moon I lured my wide-eyed prey to the pier's edge. Before she could properly appreciate her position, I clamped on a manacle, chaining her to the leering idol. A small push was sufficient to send both into the icy waters. And when at length the tide receded, Jewels of the most magnificent grandeur lay scattered upon the shore. The aquatic devils have remade the poor girl in their image. She is their queen and their slave. in the same world. have become a nuisance along the old road, and so I undertook to receive my most 
luxurious deliveries by way of marine shipments. A sheltered jetty was accessible by a narrow stone stair off the back of the manor, and a discreet system of pulleys could hoist even the heaviest prizes up the rock face from a securely tied dinghy below. I employed a crew of particularly unsavory mariners who for a time sailed the four corners at my behest, retrieving many valuable artifacts, relics, and rare texts. Predictably, they increased their tariffs to counter my intense stipulations of secrecy. Such resources had long been exhausted, of course, and so I have prepared an alternative payment. While the greedy dogs slept off their revelry, I hexed their anchor with every twisted incantation I could muster, imbuing it with the weight of my ambition and my contempt for their crude extortion. At the witching hour, the anchor pulled with preternatural force, dragging craft and crew down into the depths. They must have cried out. No sound escaped the swirling black waters. Blackness, far beyond the light's reach. 